Hello everybody, I'm Boaz Feiler, I'm an evolutionary astrologer and this is the evolutionary astrology message for the week between the 31st of March and the 7th of April 2018 and today I have a very special guest here with me, Michael Offek, which literally translates to Michael Ascendant or Michael Horizon. Uh, Michael is a Hellenistic astrologer, he's a traditional astrologer, he's not just a traditional astrologer because he's always looking for ways to synthesize with modern astrology. Although I am a modern astrologer, when I want to study ancient astrology, ancient techniques, horary astrology, Hellenistic astrology, I go to Michael. Michael gives workshops and courses and teaches worldwide. I'm very honored that you joined us, uh, Michael. And thank you for being here this week with us in this conjunction week. <clears throat> thank you for having me. So uh, I brought, you know, I've, I've been nagging Michael for a long time to take part in the videos and finally in the week that we have both a Mercury retrograde going into Kazemi and uh, a conjunction between Mars and Saturn, Michael has agreed to share his wisdom with us. So Michael, this week begins with a full moon in Libra. You've been looking at the charts. This is a full moon that is squaring that Saturn Mars and opposing Mercury it's a blue moon uh, very special uh, 2018 is very special that way that we had two uh, full moons in January and two full moons in March but no full moon in February so and and mm -hmm. as you told me before off camera this is the first full moon of the astrological new year that's been very significant in many different traditions in the past also in the jewish tradition so please tell tell us all about it again yes well <clears throat> um the first uh, full moon of the astrological year uh, which is the libra full moon um um, as you said, is uh, very significant. Many cultures uh, in uh, in Jewish culture, you know, we celebrate uh, the Passover in this full moon. And um, um, just to uh, maybe take the uh, this the principle of the full moon and, and understand it in the context of this uh, uh, first um, lunation of the of the new year. <coughs> Uh, so this full moon represents, in a sense, uh, the, um, uh, the manifestations of the, the spring areas, energetic life principle um, uh, coming about, embodied uh, in, um, uh, through the moon as, as reflected of this uh, energy embodied in the earth or in our lives. So it's like the the highest um, uh, what's the word the highest volume mm -hmm. of that uh, um, this life force this germinating very powerful spring energy mm -hmm. uh, to its maximum um, its maximum volume uh, uh, in the in the first month of the year. Mm -hmm. So, what you're saying really is that there's a lot of spring energy in the air. There's a lot of um, seedlings that are just sprouting. There is an there's the inner intro revolution, and these are a lot of energies. So, on the one hand, we could wish for harmony with that Libra moon. We could wish for good relationships with the other. But on the other hand, we have all this Aryan energy, this spring uh, Martian energy sweating up. We've been talking about off camera that Mars is out of bounds as well. And we have all these uh, 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 planets in Aries, including the sun ruled by Mars. So all that spring energy and... Um, 
on the other hand and and we could be faced we could be faced with the dissonance between our craving our wants our desires and how they affect other people and how they they coincide with other people other people's wishes and needs as well in our community yes <coughs> yes yes uh, that, that's part of the duality of full moon that it's like uh, it's the highest expression of uh, of uh, the life force being individuated in a sense or mm -hmm. taking down into the earth and leaving its universal source um, and if we're talking about the Aries energy, so it's full of uh, um, individual need for expression, for going out there, for, uh, um, uh, you know, asserting itself. Mm -hmm. uh, so this full moon polarizes the, the me versus the others, me versus community. Uh, how can my ideas uh, find a compromise uh, with the other, the other in, in the general sense of the other, uh, every mm -hmm. otherness. Mm -hmm. Um, and, um, and, <clears throat> and the fact that it is squaring, uh, this very powerful, uh, conjunction of, uh, uh, applying conjunction of Mars and Saturn shows that there will be, a, uh, powerful tensions between my own need for accomplishments and, uh, and strive for independence and expression. Uh, through the reflection of, of course, of the other, of a partner, or other people, um, and that will be pretty much uh, uh, the, the intensity of uh, the charge of the atmosphere in, in this weekend. Definitely. And with this opposition to Mercury retrograde, communications can be a problem. I know, <laughs> if, I, if I can share something personal, I have a very loving amazing wife and i'm i feel like i'm the most blessed person on earth to have met her but during the last period uh, last weeks there was there's been a lot of miscommunications and this is something that a lot of people can experience generally venus in charge of relationships has been going through a tough time tough transits with began with the square to mars continued with the uh, square to Pluto and 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 Saturn, and also uh, uh, um, we had the Venus Uranus conjunction. So there's been a lot of upheavals in relationships lately, but we're getting to a better place. We're going to talk about it as we end this week. We're getting to a Venus trying Saturn, and that's already a better place. That's a more stable place. So there's been a lot of miscommunications with that full moon opposing mercury retrograde i would really watch how i state things how i phrase things what i spell out of my mouth how i navigate through this life with other people in my surroundings and really know that i'm on a short leash that now the universe is holding us on that short leash so we could be more exact so we could learn our mistakes so we could as you said again uh, uh, before, as we were talking, it's a bit like sharpening that edge of the knife or honing the blade, honing the blade of the sword, so we could cut things sharper. That was your image that you 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 told me before. So I would really watch communications. Anything else we want to say about this full moon, or are we going on to Sunday, the first of April? Uh, <clears throat> well. What can I add about it? You know, it's uh, uh, for sure it's not going to be a very uh, comfortable um, a couple of days. And there will be a, 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 um, an intense need for adjustment of, uh, a, of your expression as it reflects or uh, gets into dialogue with the world or other people. Um, so, you know... I would only say try to keep calm, mm. try not to over fight your ideas, um, and um, that too will change. Yes, this time. You know, in, the, in last yeah. week's video, I've been I've been telling people that this is a, a bit of a period in the sky 
Like, you remember that Seinfeld episode, Serenity Now? A bit like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, but, you know, we've been talking about how relationships are getting better and satisfaction is getting better and our whole connection to our senses and sensuality and, satis- and you know, uh, food, drink, people in our life, love is getting better at the end of the week. But it, I, I was wrong. It's getting better at the beginning of this week, this Saturday, the 31st, because Venus is moving already into Taurus. You want to tell us a little bit about about this move and what it means for you, this ingress? Yes, well, you know, very simply, I would say that uh, Venus in Taurus, as Venus is uh, connected to its own resources uh, in in her nightly uh, heavenly abode, uh, is connecting us back to our, you know, simple, uh, physical, uh, sensual, aesthetic um, uh, tastes and, uh, and need for um, uh, I think that Sorry, that connect- word- connection, that connectivity to our bodies and to our senses provides us with this general sense. It's not only satisfaction because it's more than satisfaction. It's a sense of ease. It's like feeling good within our own body. And when I'm talking about feeling good or feeling better within our own bodies, I'm talking about feeling better within the physical plane in general. How that energetic being that we are, that mental, emotional vortex that we are, connects into this funnel of of materialism and... and, and, uh, Intangibility. Yes, well, you know, uh, simply put, uh, has to do with the uh, principle of uh, pleasure. Yes. Which is an important principle. Um, uh, you know, we need to know uh, not to exaggerate, but it's important to connect to it and to ground ourselves in our bodies uh, and give ourselves the right and uh, nurture atmosphere. Um, and uh, this is something very much more calm, as you said, uh, in the Torian energy. And, uh, um, and as we talked about before, the trine that Venus is going to do with... Uh, mm-hmm. and Saturn. Uh, Saturn and Mars. Mars. Saturn and Mars, Saturn. yeah. Yeah. Um, can give uh, a very good opportunity to strengthen our... Um, uh, you know, our bonds and relationships after they suffered a little yeah. bit. Um, as it uh, it connects Venus and Mars harmoniously, which you know are, uh, are basically opposites, uh, uh, ideally in the in the zodiac, as their signs yeah. are opposites and their significations are opposites. Um, and of course, Mars is exalted and Venus is in her own sign. The both in Earth signs. So it's so a very get of, together. Of, um, yeah, of getting together, of grounding the relationship, of being more um, present uh, physically and uh, with um, the ability to, um, how do you say, uh, no? Tell me in Hebrew. Commit. To, commit. To commit to one another, which is uh, significantly, significantly in the air. Uh, yes. with this trine yes. and Saturn of course being involved there also yeah. I think I think uh, that you know ingress to Taurus also as well you know tell me if I'm wrong but in ancient times this would have been the time of the year that we would have gone out to the blooming meadows and had wild sex around the bonfire and feasts and uh, in a way, wel- welcoming the, 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 the coming of summer or the coming of, of, of the sun, the returning of the sun, so to speak. Yes, yes. Right? Since the equinox and, and inside, you know, the, the, since the sun moves into Taurus, uh, somewhere in the middle of, of uh, the spring, uh, is, is most of the rituals that have to do with, uh, um, how do you say, um, Fertility. Fertility. And, yes. uh, and of course, you know, part of it, uh, the, the pagan uh, uh, festivals were, uh, you know, making love in nature mm-hmm. in order to um, uh, motivate nature to do the same. 
in yeah. this sense. To yeah. Yeah. Be more fertile and give more fruits. Uh, so yes, there's a lot of very uh, young and impulsive and uh, um, carnal energy, uh, as prolific well. energy. Yeah. What? Carnal, carnal energy as well. Yes, carnal energies. Yes, yes. And and that carnality can lead us into fruitfulness because, as you said, that Mars is exalted in Saturn and can be consistent more than usual. So that can you can lead us yes. to fruitfulness and, and to achievements on the one hand, or to uh, let's say hardship and and and. Uh, Maybe being judged for our own actions. Maybe dealing with uh, facing reality. Face, facing the judgment of yes. reality. Understanding how we need to change and mature. But you know, one more thing about this Venus and Taurus that I'm thinking of right now. I think that satisfaction st starts with me. That's what Venus and Taurus says. You know? Mm. First of all, it's about connecting to or the, the ability to satisfy yourself in Taurus. And only once that is sort of settled, can you actually enjoy more of your life. Does that make sense? <laughs> First of all, connect to yourself. Yes, of course. Anyway, so okay. Sunday, April 1st, we're having Mercury and Kazemi in an inferior conjunction. What do you say about yes. that? Uh, <clears throat> well, first of all, uh, Kazimi is a state where a planet is said to take the throne of the sun uh, and be powerfully uh, expressed by the soul of power, um, um, bypassing a little bit the, um, the combust uh, energy. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, and, and in Mercury cycle, this is of course at the time when Mercury is in the closest proximity to Earth. So uh, his, his energy, energy is very accessible in a sense. But he is of course in the middle of this retrograde period and, uh, and he's not visible as he's uh, very much in the, uh, close to the Sun. Uh, <coughs> I would say that it's a really good time for uh, connecting with uh, much more universal and archetypal kind of uh, thoughts and ideas. Sorry. And to... What? I said attributes? Um, universal attributes? Yeah, attributes, ideas. Ideas, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yes, because it's not the specific expressions of those ideas but the, their core underlying um, principle, universal seeds, which can be um, harnessed in a sense mm. uh, at the time of this uh, inferior conjunction. Uh, it's like going deep inside, you know, it's going to the underworld or the overworld or mm. whatever, and, uh, and connecting with the higher archetypes of Mercury. Uh, <coughs> <clears throat> and gradually uh, developing them as Mercury uh, gets further from the sun and, and gets uh, you know, rises from the sun rays afterwards. Um, so it's it's time of soul searching. It's a time of uh, many uh, um, insights um, and uh, and the time of um, of uh, ideas seeding themselves in us and waiting for the right time to uh, evolve into action or evolve into the into uh, where we can even articulate them because uh, um, when this process begins they're probably not even articulated they are more of a sense of feeling of presence um, than something that is really uh, you know tangible standing on its own it be expressed in words. Yeah. Wonderful. And uh, you told me before that, uh, like I always say in a Kazemi 
it's a great time to take some time and visualize and or deeply contemplate as you said and 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 try and work with this energy and connect to it so you could navigate your life forward better in the coming in the coming weeks it could be a glimpse yes and the idea that comes, that comes to mind when uh, we talk about areas yeah uh, of course, it has to do with uh, my own expression of my own individuality and, uh, um, and um, uh, what, what is the word? Uh, okay, I forgot. <laughs> I haven't spoken English for a while. It's okay. It's our uh, second language. Yeah. Believe me, we're talking better English than they talk Hebrew. <laughs> <laughs> that's comforting yeah. All right. anyway so this is yeah, Mercury cool. Kazemi in an inferior conjunction I asked you before since you are the master in old scriptures what does the, uh, the the old masters what do they say about the difference between an inferior and a superior conjunction and and you immediately started quoting Ibn Ezra on me, and uh, you want to you want to you, you want to share that uh, saying by Ibn Ezra about the difference. Just, just the general <coughs> uh, uh, general difference between a Mercury contemplating earthly things while he's in his uh, inferior conjunction and Mercury contemplating spiritual or higher things. Uh, on its uh, superior conjunctions. Um, he was talking about, of course, the natal charts yes. and the differences. Um, so this is, may this is maybe one, uh, one, one difference that you can articulate. Yeah. Great. Thank you. So Monday, the second, we have a Scorpio moon sextiling an exact conjunction between Mars and Saturn in Capricorn. Yeah. What's that all about? That's the conjunction all about. Um, well, uh, <clears throat> well, first of all, some technical stuff. Um, the, the, this conjunction is unique, as Mars and Saturn are both uh, said to be uh, essentially dignified. There, uh, Mars is said to be exalted in Capricorn. And Saturn is said to be in his own sign, and uh, this makes a whole lot of difference uh, because because this uh, conjunction uh, is not the most fun conjunction in most of the time, and it could be reflective of many hardships um, and suffering in many ways. Uh, of course, it also has its good qualities, but uh, but in Capricorn. Uh, there's the potential of those good qualities to manifest uh, uh, much better, much more sustainable, much more coherent. Um, <clears throat> and as I, I told you before, it's a very interesting uh, conjunction in many ways, uh, also because um, uh, uh, the sun is in Aries, and it's having this uh, right square from uh, Mars and Saturn, and that means that when the sun is rising, then Mars and Saturn is culminating on the mid heaven. And also, Ptolemy tells us that this phase of, of morning planets uh, getting reaching the 90 degrees is very, very powerful for achievements in the world. You know. Um, 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 sorry not quality-wise, but quantity-wise, in a sense. Also quality-wise, but, but a lot of uh, <clears throat> um, power um, uh, to, to do things in the world, to move things, to shake things, to, uh, uh, to draw your path and you know, follow it. Uh, so it's, it's powerful. Of course, it can also express itself negatively in many ways, but it's also a a pretty powerful opportunity, uh, you know, to um, take the ropes of the horse and, 
and, and show it uh, where to go. Uh, with stamina, with uh, um, um, consistency, maturity. Consistency, thank you. Maturity, yeah. Responsibility. Yeah. Uh, so this is a kind of couple of technical stuff that's, um, that's happening. The square to the sun and uh, the essential dignity. Um, either than that, we also have Mars um, out of bounds, uh, which is not something that uh, tradition puts uh, really emphasis about, but it's interesting that how it um, fits into the picture, because as Mars gains uh, essential strength um, in, the, in the solar phase and in its place in the sun, he is also really high in the sky, he is a little bit more higher than the sun gets uh, at summer in uh, in our hemisphere. And that so means he's, that he's, he's out even of going her above range. the sun. He's above the sun. He's yes. out of her chains. He's, yes, he's free from yes. her bounds. So he's like really pushing the boundaries uh, to climb up. Um, he's really uh, motivated to go beyond the rules, in a sense. Mm -hmm. Of course, that could also be uh, negative uh, in many ways. But um, uh, but if you take the whole symbology together, then it's uh, it's really intense, a powerful time for uh, for moving things ahead, for uh, achieving things, for starting um, uh, projects, um, and uh, and going the way, you know. Yeah. And Saturn may also reflect uh, challenges uh, on the road. And things that you need to, you know, to push to get ahead, in a sense. Um, so he will be straightening, um, yeah, from the word straight, yeah. uh, the energy of Mars, as uh, as Capricorn, in a sense, does. Uh, the, the the good potential of it is that it really uh, pushes you to make uh, choices and to and to see clearly. Uh, and articulate clearly uh, your aims. Um, so there's a lot of um, need for, you might say, need uh, for excellence, a need uh, to be decisive, a need to focus your energy uh, practically uh, for moving ahead in your life, in your career, um, in any of the things that you aspire to. To bring into your life and build. Um, yeah, I was also uh, talking, if it's okay. Sure, sure. I was Go also ahead. I'm about, loving it. Uh, yeah. uh, the physical uh, qualities of Mars and Saturn traditionally. Uh, Saturn is traditionally said to be very dry and cold. Some sources say he's also moist, which is interesting, maybe because he's a uh, winter. Uh, signs are in the winter, uh, but uh, <clears throat> but it's very fitting to see him as very uh, cold and dry, as he makes very dry uh, distinctions. Um, but he also cools uh, the activity, uh, <clears throat> which can, uh, for Mars, sometimes uh, feel like you know trying to put the gas when the handbrake is. You know, he's trying to move, but he has that uh, cooling energy which takes down the activity. Mm -hmm. That, of course, can be a good balance for Mars. You know, in the best way, the heat of Mars and the cool of Saturn can balance themselves out. But something that is uh, extremely um, uh, expressed is the dryness, um, because they're both very dry, in a sense. Now, a dryness, in the principle, is something that uh, that shows uh, um, distinct. very distinct boundaries and uh, um, how do you say uh, separations from one thing to the other. Uh, <clears throat> so it helps. So it has that feeling of activity that separates. Uh, um, or differentiates, which can also sound a bit uh, negative, but it, 
it is very positive if you think of uh, the need to take a choice, you know, to make a really decisive action and to see, to see things clearly or to, you know, imagine uh, your vision in much more clear um, borders. Uh, and of course, this is, in a sense, this is the secret of power. If you really want to manifest something in this earthly plane, you need to know how to circumvent it, focus it, and be coher coherent in how you put your energy into it. And this is, I, I, I think, the highest potential of this uh, uh, combination, you know. So the magician. Um, oh, what? The magician. We're talking about magic. Yes. Yes. Um, if I'm not mistaken, there is a source in astral magic that um, gives a talisman to make uh, this conjunction, which is uh, used to uh, to win wars or to protect, a protecting kind of uh, uh, phylactery or uh, I don't remember how uh, the name of it, but. <clears throat> But there's, there's also kind of a very stubborn, um, a, a rigid, protective kind of armor yeah. into this imagery yeah. uh, of, uh, of the, the wild soldier putting a strong armor uh, and protecting himself inside his, uh, you know, the walls. Um, you know what I see um, as an amazing depiction of what's happening in the sky right now? How the no, youth, how teenagers are reacting uh, to gun laws and the shooting in the mm. United States. We can see the airy sun, the young people leading the heart, leading the way, being the leaders, squaring that Mars, Saturn, and Capricorn. Um, yes. Yes, and the tension. Yes, for the... surely, for surely, in uh, in the context of uh, politics or uh, you know, more mundane stuff, um, this could be a hard time as uh, people in authority can put uh, very uh, hard rules on, on things, uh, um, and and we should remember that Mars is when it separates from Saturn, it will be applying to Pluto. So all this Pluto, Saturn, uh, Capricorn energy, yeah. uh, which has to do with the people in power also, yeah. and structures. Uh, structures and, of governance. So, yeah. And the plutocracy, you know, the people that own the world, in a exactly. sense, at least uh, physically or financially. Politics of power. Uh, yeah. yeah. So it's like you know, this historical cycle a little bit of the Pluto Saturn, which is a big of uh, a bit of the, the big brother archetype. Mm. A little bit. So of course it can be military actions and it can be putting sanctions or putting you know very tough laws um, uh, from the perspective of uh, the governing power. But from the perspective of uh, of the people, it could be people that have the power to stand firm against uh, things that they, you know, uh, and protect, do not agree with, yeah, against the government, and, yeah, and fight back, and fight back, and, uh, and Saturn is, is a bit like the image of the rock that you need to push in order to get to the top of the mountain, so uh, I think that gives a lot of energy to, to really push that, um, that rock and, uh, and to be uh, uh, enduring in that process and, uh, and do it until you get the results, hopefully, from our side. Yeah, so from the everything you said, I can't agree more. Um, I think it's, it's we're having a wonderful talk. I just hope it's still recording and everything is well, uh, Mercury permitting. And I'm talking yeah. about Mercury and Mercury permitting, communication-wise, navigation-wise, uh, communication both verbally and electronically, we're having a Mercury retrograde. Okay, it is in Kazimi <clears throat> on Sunday, but we are in the middle of the Mercury retrograde. 
and um, we're getting back into the square with Mars Saturn that we had before the retrograde. So Mercury is very compromised. <laughs> what do we tell people about communication yeah. schedules in general about this week? We having um, Mercury retrograde squaring that Mars Saturn on Wednesday the fourth, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that uh, that will probably be the climax of uh, you know, the retrograde uh, energy, as Mercury stumbles uh, with the opposing energy of, uh, um, of Saturn and Mars. <coughs> and Mercury is in Aries, so you know uh, uh, he drives very fast, mm -hmm. and uh, but he needs to. Um, um, how do you say it? like the, the, it's like in a traffic jam mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. you want to advance but but you're stuck in a track in a traffic jam and uh, the energy gets very much um, built up and intense condensed yeah condensed yeah uh, so of course uh, it could be a very frustrating uh, energy and things will um, what will hit a wall in a sense, uh, but that's a bit part of, of the general energy of this week and uh, conjunction. Yeah. So there's it's there's part like of the organic... process that we need to go through in order to mature and transcend and evolve, make better choices, yeah, hold our if edge. You know, you know, if you're starting to germinate an idea for action around this time then you might be a bit impulsive to jump ahead with Mercury in areas, uh, trying to fulfill it, and then you will probably get caught in all the bureaucracy and things that need to do before you can fulfill that energy. Uh, that could be uh, draining. And uh, <clears throat> so, you know, you need to really take a deep breath yeah. and try not to push things uh, too much powerfully, you yeah, know. Yeah. Part of the energy, as I said, of uh, um, Saturn is is also cooling, so it makes things slower, yeah. which we don't always like. Yeah. But you know, the reality of the things um, uh, tell us most of the time: slow down, do it. You know, um, 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 how do you say? <coughs> um, Tell me in Hebrew. The word. Uh, latmid. Ah, consistently. Latmid. Yeah. yeah, just, uh, you know, uh, you need to water the plants every day for them to grow. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you cannot put a lot of water at one time and expect the, the plant to become a tree. Yeah. So just, you know, take a deep breath and start the process and do it slowly and gradually until you start seeing... Uh, you know the uh, the, the blooming, fruits, the fruit, uh, the fruiting, the blooming. Yeah. Great. We forgot to say that on Tuesday the third we having the Scorpio Moon conjunct Jupiter in the evening. So that could be a good yeah. evening for people to maybe get in touch with something that can expand their horizons. Maybe something spiritual. Maybe go. Uh, into uh, um, you know a, a zone or maybe go out to nature as well but this is a time that we could go undergo transformative experiences through the exposure to new knowledge or to what what would you say about this evening what more would you say about this evening yeah well every <coughs> every month when the moon uh, joins Jupiter uh, it's an opportunity to access uh, Jupiterian virtues, in a sense, uh, which are now uh, radiated through Scorpio, which is not a very um, comfortable place for the moon, traditionally. But still, you know, as Scorpio shows sometimes uh, a lot of inner emotional battles and charged, uh, deep uh, charged energy, uh, and Jupiter there can show 
process of insight and healing and um, and going deep into uh, into deeper secrets, not only personal but also collective or philosophic. Um, so I think it's a good op opportunity to uh, to contemplate uh, those issues and um, you know and bring them forth. Amen to that. Thursday, the Amen. fifth, we have a Sag moon. It is squaring Neptune, it's trining the sun a little later, so afternoon, evening, Europe, morning time, USA. What would you say about Thursday? Trying to the sun, um, moon, trying sun, Saj moon, yeah. squaring Neptune a little earlier. Yeah, so uh, this is the, the, the moon, trying, the moon, what? So it could be a day of going out to nature. It could be a great yes, time to just yes. enjoy yourself, not something too sophisticated, not something too tentious. Right brain activity. Yes, yes. Uh, I would say just something in general and then specific. I would say uh, uh, the moon, wherever it is uh, in its cycle, uh, is reflective of the, of the solar principle of that month. Of the, the life principle, you might say, that month. So, uh, if it's correlative in its expression, then it reflects this light better uh, and supports its uh, uh, its essential energy in a sense. So, uh, this fire trine is very positive in expressing those areas, Sagittarius, uh, life affirming, um, enthusiastic uh, energy. Uh, so it's really good for going, you know, mm -hmm. to an adventure, uh, inner and outer, or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I think it, the, the physical energy here is strong, you know. Get out of the house, yeah. go outside, go to nature, yeah. uh, explore something, uh, dance, move, uh, you know, yeah. uh, and celebrate. Celebrate life. Great. Yeah. Friday the 6th, it's already a Cap Moon, Capricorn Moon. Squaring Chiron, a little sensitive day. We could be in touch with our inner pains, our sensitive spots. Other people around us can be as well. Better watch, not be hard ass that day towards ourselves or others. What what can you tell us about a moon square Chiron day, especially in Capricorn? Well, you know, again, yeah, uh, again uh, uh, it's not a very comfortable place traditionally for the moon. Uh, because Capricorn is very rigid and the moon is more, you know, plas uh, plasticity, how do you say, like more fluid and uh, spontaneous and has to do also, of course, with the emotions and Saturn is more cold and rigid and, uh, and we could be uh, encumbered by our responsibilities, uh, by our choices, by things that have to do all surrounding this uh, Mars-Saturn energy. Uh, <coughs> But it also can uh, enhance the determination of, of those things because it's, uh, it's still reflecting the Aries energy from its 10th sign to it uh, and conjuncting those very uh, powerful, um, um, you know, uh, the conjunction planets that we talked about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. I would say maybe emotionally it could be uh, a bit dense and heavy, but it could also be a time to advance some of the things um, that we talked about. Mm -hmm. Although it falls on a weekend, so yeah. I don't know. Uh, well, we, we practically, could work on a weekend. We could take things forward on a weekend. I mean, actually, it's of course, some of the things I do. Forward is, uh, can also be, you know, uh, internally. Yeah. Uh, in, in many ways, not only. Uh, expressed in action yeah yeah especially with that square to chiron yeah um yeah saturday the 7th we have the exact trine between venus saturn and, and mars like yeah. saturn and mars and venus and we have the moon conjunct that saturn and mars trining that venus so yeah, 
Well, we talked a little bit about that. Yeah, we Shuna talked about it at the beginning of the video. Basically, this is a this is a sweet note to end the week with, you know, because we know that that whole place of relationships, and we're talking about relationships. We're talking about any kind of relationships, intimate relationships, and just in general, me and the other, and my relationship with myself, with my own self as well. Venus has a part, the Taurian part of Venus always has a part of um, self-evaluation, how you say it, erch um, me, self-value. 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 So how I value myself. So generally speaking, this could be a time that I start making better, more strategic choices in these realms that bring me to better satisfaction with that trying to Saturn and 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 you said that trying to mars as you said happens in in beautiful signs and bring you you said better brings this union yeah you know it's, we, uh, when we talk about all these predictions we always uh, talk about um <coughs> trying to express the higher or more noble form of those energies and, and the way they can be constructive uh every mars venus energy can also you know, turn the other cheek a little bit and be more intense and uh, confronting. But oh, but because it's a, it's, it's a tribe, there's more potential for agreement, for doing things together, for stabilizing a relationship, specifically uh, uh, sexual, uh, you know... Sensual, uh, sexual, uh, physical. Sexual, sensual, yeah, uh, energy between partners. And... Um, and I would say that the trying to uh, Saturn, Saturn being involved in all this, uh, really uh, pushes the way for a more committed and grounded relationship. Uh, it has a lot of more uh, weight and seriousness to it than in air signs or fire signs. Or, you know, it's not a one-night stand. Uh, it's something enduring and committed. Um, and can really strengthen uh, existing um, partnerships uh, and also uh, opens the way for new um, and enduring partnerships Amen to that, that will start around this period. I mean to that. So after being um, shaken a little, after having a bit of an, some, some, some storms, torrential rains and, and earthquakes in our relationships over the past few weeks, we are getting to a much more energetic, sensual, sexual, passionate, and strategic, stable place within our relationship. This is a great time to mend those bridges and, and, um, and enjoy ourselves while we're doing it as well. This is really a sweet note to end uh, this week with. And Michael, I want to thank you again for, for coming here, for sharing your knowledge. I want to tell everybody again that you are teaching, you're giving uh, um, um, courses and private lessons and uh, lectures and workshops both for NCGR and for Kepler and how can people get in touch with you? Well, they can find me <coughs> through Facebook or uh, through my site. Uh, Which is? The domain is uh, slash uh, skycom and um, great. I will be happy to hear from anyone. Great. Yeah. Thank you for inviting me. It was my pleasure and honor. And everybody, may you have a beautiful week ahead. May we all take these times. Uh, and utilize them in the best way possible and work with these energies like uh, Michael said in, in a constructive way and that's it see you soon Toda. thank you bye bye thank you Toda. Toda. <laughs>